Well, that was cathartic. Warning, the following contains spoilers for the latest episode of Game of Thrones titled The Lion and the Rose. You have been warned. It finally happened. The good King Joffrey is stone dead. Ceased to be. Passed on. Expired and gone to meet his maker. An ex-person. The cause of death? Poison. At his own wedding. And in the wake of that death, we find ourselves with a mystery in King's Landing. Now here's what we know for sure about the moments leading up to the death. Several people took a bite out of that pie, and even more drank the wine. But only Joffrey drank from that goblet, and he got a good number of gulps in before the poison kicked in. So I'm guessing the cup was poisoned moments before he drank it and croaked. With that, let's review the suspects. Tyrion was left holding the bag as Joffrey's final act was to finger his uncle for his murder. And there was Tyrion conveniently holding the offending goblet. It's safe to say that this is a frame-up. Just like in season one when Catelyn thought that uh, Tyrion had sent an assassin to kill Bran. Just like that time, Tyrion is not an idiot. If he had been responsible, he would have done more to divert suspicion away from himself. We can rule out Cersei as well, who was in an especially jolly mood this day. What with that pittance of power she's built up slipping away now that she's handing over the Queen Regent badge. But while she would love to get one over on Tyrion, there were far too many random elements at play for her to guarantee that he would take the fall. And even she wouldn't sink to subjecting her own offspring to such a painful demise. But would Tywin? Yeah, you know, wouldn't that be messed up? Especially since he went through the trouble of forging that shiny new sword for his grandson. After everything he's done over the years to defeat his enemies and finally put a Lannister on the throne, might he decide that this one's just too much trouble and bump him off in favor of his younger, gentler, easier to manipulate brother? Might even serve as a subtle message to his brood that if any of them have to die for the good of the family name, he's not above seeing it through. And while we're on the subject, let's not forget about Tommen. He was at the table. Can't rule him out. We don't know a lot about Joffrey's baby bro, except that he seems like a perfectly agreeable little prince. And damn, has he grown. Last time I saw him, he was on his mom's lap and Blackwater was winding down. More importantly, now that Joff is no more, he is next in line for the throne. So he certainly has something to gain. And on the subject of revenge, there is, of course, Sansa. She had more reason than anyone to want to see the brat king bumped off. When Tyrion goes on trial, as we've seen in the previews, I'm sure there will be speculation that they were in on it together. She could have planted something in the cup when she picked it up and handed it to Tyrion. But she was surprised when Danto showed up to spirit her away just as shit was going down. I'm sure they'll accuse Tyrion of arranging that too. Come to think of it, last episode Dantos gave her that necklace. And I'm wondering if that has anything to do with the poison. We'll come back to that in a bit, but whatever the scheme, it seems pretty clear that Sansa didn't know it was coming. Speaking of revenge, there is Prince Oberyn. He freely missed a heavy vendetta against the Lannisters, and made sure to give Tywin a piece of his mind during the reception. And while it's feasible he might have somehow orchestrated the incident, he was nowhere near that table, and delivering the poison would have taken precise timing. So whether he was an accomplice or not, somebody at that table had to have done the deed. We can probably rule out Marjorie as well, as she had more to lose than anyone with her new husband getting bumped off. Now that she's widow of two kings back to back, she's bound to get a reputation. One who definitely had opportunity was Olena. I mean, who would suspect the witty old lady? She was one of the closest people to the cup before Tyrion handed it back to Joffrey. She could have easily poisoned it while everyone was distracted by the pigeons flying out of the pie. Either way, I'm betting that that's when it actually happened. Come to think of it, she got a good look at Sansa's new necklace when they exchanged words. And I've heard that if you look closely, one of the jewels on the necklace disappears during the scene. When Joff started choking, she was the first one to shout at the onlookers to help the poor lad. And that's how you throw off suspicion. In the previews for next episode, she's already assuring Marjorie that they can play things to their advantage, even though her granddaughter won't be queen like they'd originally planned. There's two things I'm not sure about with this one. One, if Sansa's necklace had a poison thing on there, why wouldn't Olena just have it up her own sleeve rather than getting it off somebody else? Second is motive. The marriage was obviously means to an end, but after everything they went through to set it up, she's just going to throw it all away? Now, someone who definitely had motive was Sir Loras. Remember how he encouraged Renly to go after the throne, even though there was no way in the Seven Hells it was going to happen? So he's definitely not above a bit of duplicity. Add to that, the Knight of Flowers took his boyfriend's death harder than anyone else, and was visibly upset at the sight of Joffrey's little pageant. Not to mention Joff's comments about Renly when talking to Brienne. And now his sister's marrying the little prick. He 
You might have been all, sorry sis, I am not putting up with this shit every Thanksgiving. Well, can't wait to see how this unfolds. Who do you think done the deed? Feel free to share your theories in the comments down below. No book spoilers, please. Like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Mm-hmm.